Praise the Lord. Once again, it's a beautiful day. And we thank the Lord who have watched over us throughout the night and bless us with another wonderful day. We thank God that in the midst of all the challenges of this pandemic and fear and panic, he has protected us and will keep protecting us. This morning, I want to share with you on what I topic, the three pieces to possession. Perception, perceive, pursue, and possess. Let's turn our Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 28, read verse 1 and 2. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 and 2. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments which I command you this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on you and overtake you if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God. Now, God speaks. Satan speaks, and even we, our emotions, speaks. Whose voice are you hearing? Whose voice are you hearing? The voice of the Lord will take you to your destination. The voice of the enemy will take you to destruction. And in fact, your own emotional voices will lead you after the devil. And the Bible here is telling us to possess our possession, number one. We must perceive, we must have a perceptive knowledge of the voice of God. But when God speaks, we recognize the voice of God. We know God is the one speaking. And when God speaks, no matter what he says, we are recognizing his voice and knowing the way he speaks to us. No, this is the voice of the Lord and this is the word of the Lord. He said, if ye shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, hearken is a two-in-one word here and came and that means uh, hearing attentively with the desire of doing what you hear to hearken means uh, to hear attentively with the desire of doing what you hear and so when you hear from God, you know this is from God. God speaks in various ways. He can speak to us through the word of God. He can speak to us through our own dreams. He can speak to us through prophetic messages from other people and even messages on earth, either by radio or by preaching. Once you hear the voice, you must recognize the voice. Joseph dreamt two times and that led to his brethren selling him into slavery. But because Joseph knew the revelations God gave him through his dreams are from God, he pursued them diligently. How did he pursue his journey? Joseph maintained his righteousness. When his brethren arrested him, they said, there cometh the dreamer. Let's slay him and see what shall become of his dreams. And then on the second thought, let us not kill him, let's throw him to the pit. pit. Then in the pit, they said, no, let's pull him out and sell him to the Ishmaelites. And they sold him into slavery. There was no resistance. There was nothing they could do. Even when he received his brethren, they did sold him. And the slave master, you can never escape. But then in the slave market, in the slave market, he was <laughs> purchased by a rich man. And even in the rich man's house, he didn't hide his God. He didn't hide his God. Let us turn to that and pick Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. Joseph's dreams. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Genesis chapter 13, 39 said, from verse 1, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of this guard, an Egyptian, bought him 
of the hands of the Ishmaelizer, which has brought him down tighter. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was prosperous. <laughs> he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of Potiphar. God was with him. How was God with him? Because he maintained his righteousness before God. He knew there is a vision he's pursuing. He knew there is a destination he was going. So he would not allow worldly things to distract his attention. He would not even allow the slavery with which he had been sold into. He didn't allow the slavery mentality to pin him down to do evil things. He maintained his righteousness in God. What perceptive knowledge do you have? What is your vision? What are you pursuing? And how do you pursue it? Joseph committed himself into the house of the Lord. Let's come down and read from verse 5. And it came to pass... From, time, from that time that he had made him overseer in his house, that Joseph was made overseer in the house of Potiphar, and over all that he had. And the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessings of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in the hands of Joseph, and he knew nothing but and saved the bread that he daily eats. He gave everything to Joseph. Joseph was in charge of everything. Yet this does not enter Joseph to become complacent. He maintained the righteousness God gave him. And because of him, God blessed the Egyptian. And the Egyptian noticed that. Then verse 7 said, And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph and she said, lie with me. And he refused and said unto her master's wife, Behold, my master wanted not what is with me in the house. And he has committed all that he had to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. Neither has he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife. How then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Joseph did not say the sin against Potiphar's first wife as if a sin to man. He saw God. He, meant, he knew every sin we sin against our neighbor is not only against our neighbor, but also against God. So even in his freedom, in the slave camp, yet he knew there is a God. He knew that was not the ultimate end of his journey. And before he would be able to possess his dream, he must stand right if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God and observe to do all his commandments. Though Joseph observed to do the commandment by maintaining his righteousness before God. But although the master had given him everything, he refused the wife to lie with him. This also landed him in prison. And he was in an indefinite prison term because nobody was coming to him. But then, there is no easy road to success. And if you want to possess your possession after your perception and in your pursuit, the road could be rough. The road could be dangerous. The road could be dark. But in the dark, you must keep on seeing the end of the road. Keep on seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. This is what God has set for to me. This is what I am pursuing. This is not a dangerous journey. This is the right journey and I'm going through and I'm going to have my breakthrough. Continue holding forth on your profession of your faith. That that nothing should distract you to get down and remain on the ground. No. They said a just man falleth seven times and again he rise. Now a just man falleth seven times and again he rise means seven times seven. That again multiply the seven. So a just man can fall several times but don't give up. Because you are a just man. And God will never allow a just man to be destroyed. Joseph continued. Even in the prison, he was honored as the head of the prisoners. Why? Because they saw him that he was a different man. And that he was not 
resisting anything. He was free. He was working successfully and all the time showcasing the glory of God in his life. Wherever you go, people don't need to be told that you are a man of God or you are a child of God before they recognize you. Let your actions, let your doings prove that this is a man of God. This is a child of God. And don't look at what others are doing and follow negatively. It will lead you to destruction. We have come too far to regret. We have come too far to return. We have come too far to change our mind. Therefore, remain strong in the perfection of your faith without wavering. Yes, the Lord is with you. And so, over two years, Joseph was in the prison. Then he interpreted the dream. After interpretation of the dream, he told the guys, look, when you go, you know, you know, I'm just trying to paraphrase the story because there was no much time. Now he told, when you go, tell, me, tell Pharaoh about my situation because I've done nothing wrong. I was blackmailer. Even coming to slavery, it was people's evil intention. I'm not a slave. So Joseph refused to remain a slave. He refused to remain a prisoner. He was seeing himself a free man. Even though it's Darius, he refused to remain where he is. You are never down and out. Change your mind. There is progress ahead. Hallelujah. So Joseph in the prison, he was forgotten. But because Joseph was with God, we can do everything. But God must give us the victory. So what happened? A day came, God gave Pharaoh a dream, and nobody could interpret it except Joseph. Just imagine it. How can interpretation of a dreamer lift somebody to become the prime minister if God is not in it? Hallelujah. It doesn't matter the situation in which you are. Joseph went to bed the previous night a prisoner. He awoke in the morning a prisoner. But before he went to bed that night, he was a prime minister of that nation, a foreigner, a slave, a, 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 a prisoner. Being a prime minister in a foreign land is only God who can do it. And what he did to Joseph, he's able to do it to you. Only maintain your integrity. Joseph saw his vision, his dream. It took over 18 years for the dreams to come to pass. But God was in control. And therefore, I want to assure you, God is in control in your situation. Therefore, don't give up. I want to pray with you this morning because I know God is bringing a breakthrough your way. Abba Father, you are the author and the finisher of our faith. You are the only one who speaks and it comes to pass. You are the only one who gives a vision and you watch over it to come to pass. Therefore, as many as are hearing my voice this hour, who have perceived of a vision, perception of a vision, Lord, grant them the grace to be able to walk through the challenges in the pursuit of the dream until the end, that the crown and the victory will be theirs forever. Father, we thank you that we we'll give you all the glory after you are given the breakthrough. Glory be unto you forever, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.